Okay, we'll give it like another minute for a few more people to join. And um, I'm uh, setting up the stream to YouTube so other people will be watching there. Um, and then we'll, I'll set up the space and we'll start the reading in a sec. Okay, um, hi everyone in the audience. Thanks for joining us and thanks to all the readers for being here too. Um, my name is Sunny, I'm the program director at Wendy's. Um, for those who don't know, we're um, a small nonprofit reading room and publisher library programming space um, based in, in Brooklyn, New York. Um, and today we're convened to kind of celebrate the second edition um, publication and launch of Sky's book, Perfidia. And we're here with Franklin Kara Klein, Cedar Sego, if I'm pronouncing that right, um, and Nicole Wallace. And um, yeah, thanks everyone for being here. Um, I'm gonna briefly share an an acknowledgement and introduce the readers um, and we'll get started. Um, this acknowledgement, uh, yeah, is brief and ephemeral. Um, we occupy stolen land um, and this is a present act that's not only in our history as a place and space, but in our current system of governance and daily life. For us here in Bushwick, New York today um, and in Brooklyn, um, I recognize that many different indigenous tribes and nations have called this land home in addition to the Lenape people. Um, the Red Nation states the whole system depends on violence to facilitate the accumulation of wealth and power and to suppress other non-capitalist ways of life that might challenge dominant modes of power. Political possibilities can only emerge from directly challenging the capitalist colonial system of power through collective struggle and resistance. And we demand the end to capitalism colonialism on a global level. Um, Wendy Subway is in solidarity with struggles for decolonization, land back, reparations, um, and abolition. Um, so in order of reading, first we have Franklin, um, then we have Cedar, then we have Nicole and Sky at the end. Um, for the sake of brevity um, and ease, I'm gonna drop the drop everyone's um, bios in the chat here, and then I'll also drop it on the YouTube for people who are watching there. Um, and feel free to message me if you have any questions or access related needs. There are live captions at the bottom. If you can't see them, you should be able to press subtitles too at the bottom. So yeah, feel free to ask me any questions related to that. And I'll pass the mic on to Franklin, thanks. The National Anthem. Regularly, shit gets blown prettily up when whoever's singing sings the word glare, which is the rockets, to punctuate the violence or defamiliarize it, maybe, I don't know. Sometimes I go to the grocery store and just walk around when I'm feeling lonely. The rockets and bombs gave proof, the song says. Violence was the best option and despite and or because of the kabooms, the flag remains. I expect people to be there for me all the time, but I'm terrible at reciprocating, at listening. Outside a Matt and Alley Chicago garden apartment, the city erected a massive American flag that warbles pathetically. It's too colossal for the soft breezes of the windy city. Matt hypothesizes it so you can see the flag from your car if you go east on I-90. And if I had any empathy for this broken country, I would hurdle it at this flag, the inadvertent piteousness of itself wrapped around itself, 
nowhere to go but further inward. On still days, you can't even really tell what it is other than a melange of red approximating blood and blue approximating sky. Franklin K.R. Klein walks into a bar with a line from the Young Rascals. Ah, uh, everyone is digging it and having fun and we are full of and out of love and grooving on a Sunday afternoon. The cool bar next to the acupuncture place, have a few beers, maybe a shot or two with the bartender who doesn't know the depths of your addiction. Whoa, this shit is gonna kill you, dude. This shit is going to kill you, dude. Your veins will be so visible. Your body is an unwatered plant, but you are not a cactus, man. You can't just live this kind of wet life. Drink water. Remember, water is life. Me, well, show me. Um, I want to say what, though. Um, first, see, you, you know, um, Franklin K. R. Klein. Enrolled member of the Cherokee Nation, Wolf Clan, Keeper of the Stories. Um, I want to say Wado to uh, Wendy Subway um, for, you know, um, hosting this beautiful event. Sky for texting me when I was in the drive-thru at the Greek restaurant, asking me to read the poems. Um, my fellow readers, <laughs> I'm so, so excited to hear Nicole and, and Cedar's work, and obviously Sky's as well, and, and y'all for listening. Um, I'm going to read a couple poems out of, out of my book. Um, so what? Three of them. So what? I'm so often disinterested now, especially as they're trying to break us apart. I've become fatigued. I'm not disinterested in the breaking apart. There are so many reasons to be afraid of people you know and people you don't, and the sky is pure like the cocaine Cameron raps about in my headphones or a Westbrook dunk. The sky is pure like a Westbrook dunk. The sky is pure like all the reasons to be afraid of others. The sky's purity is a matter of interest. So what? I'm trying to avoid this dangerous culture of want. Mercury, it seems, is always in retrograde. It's all getting jumbled. Meanwhile, I'm telling someone, I don't remember if they asked or not, about pastoral poetry. It describes the land without calling it stolen, generally. I mean, anyway, why write poems about the land? It describes itself. So what? East on River Rock, <clears throat> excuse me. So what? East on River Walk during the protest, a woman breastfeeds her child. This over and over, the child, the bridge, the mother, the viewer, the breast, the protest. We're trying to make a baby. Xavier covered the spread, but I didn't bet on them. I said to see, I think Xavier is going to cover the spread. She just wanted to get high, I think. I keep having dreams. I'm driving on a highway in a car. Matt murmured, you like rental cars. We slid into Chicago in the rental car. And I said, yeah, dude, this is America. It's all a rental. Visiting the Milwaukee Public Museum with Shanae. The butterflies just land on your hand there if you place your fingers just so on a leaf in front of them. Who am I to judge a butterfly's happiness? The powwow exhibition is stuck. It doesn't rotate like it should, but there is a beat up American flag and a cooler and a bored kid looking scrawny and ill-fitting t-shirt and an old laptop so I guess they did get some things right about powwows. They got some things right. We are still alive, they point out on occasion, but generally we don't look like how we look in a museum. That's what a new famous book by a newly famous native author talks about at the beginning of their book, or at least that's what I heard them talk about on NPR. Shanae crinkles her nose when I mention I'm reading the book. And we talk at the bar about toxic masculinity, and she's right, because Shanae's always right. 
I don't read much of the placards. I just gallop through the stuffy halls that pretend to hold us in our small history. Shanae pauses to read pretty much everything. We come away talking about how unlike the real depictions were, how we felt like we were walking through a big National Geographic, the pain of ossification. And on the first floor before we got up to the second floor native exhibit, we stared at two dinosaurs, one devouring the other's innards. And I made some joke about colonialism and looked over at Sinead to see if she laughed because I love when Sinead laughs. And I caught her nodding, her eyes fixated somewhere back before. This is a sestina, which is an old-timey French form with repeating words. The words that repeat are body, heart, belongs, together, hour, and dishes. It's called Olivia. Stuck in one body, my heart beats and belongs, blood and rhythm together, mine becoming our need to wash the dishes, our dishes. Scraping food off them to clean off your body of work, which made our dinner, which might clog my heart. All the meat, potatoes, carrots together as though they belong. Time without Olivia does be long. Crust evolves upon the dish of my heart, which is not together or with it or whatever. My body via my heart thumps oddly and wishes for an hour. Maybe to sit around and watch an R-rated movie where no one belongs to the part they play. They're all too beautiful, making art for popcorn enjoyment, a big aluminum dish full of dead kernels, their bodies reduced to little tan husks. At least they were together when they were enjoyed. We strived to gather our body of popcorn work. The kernels belong to the aluminum bowl which hit the dishes to be cleaned. The butter made our hearts work overtime. My eyes and my heart work overtime whenever we step out of the shower together. Clean like new dishes. Bodies each other's but also our own belonging together. Our bodies. Y'all know I hate the dish but high key my heart pines to smack itself out my body when we're together. Our future hanging out, assured it will spread. It will be long. Walk. My hair is walking out of my head. I've been walking around the neighborhood, thinking about myself mostly entirely. My immediacy, I mean. I walk up and down locust and Burleigh, and sometimes I take the bus and walk around Kinnikinnick. When we went to the mounds, we parked on something like Mound View Drive, and we could see the nice houses behind what we thought was a mound of Thunderbird. When I am on the phone, I walk around the apartment. The heat walks from the heater to keep the apartment unlike the cold outside. The step, the rhythm, I used to love to dance at dance parties, beer and chaos. The television's noise walks into the space of the room which walks into me and my genetic memory of walking. Do the right thing. There's no way it doesn't end in violence. Three poems left. Myth in which the last word is everything. Which is true, the last word of the poem is everything. The darkness is like small animals crawling on top of each other as we pile into Jimmy's rusted 77 Reliant K to go shoplift some vodka to fill our 16 year old minds with anything other than ourselves. The four of us walk in the grocery store all smiles. We make a point to buy some toilet paper, but not enough to attract too much attention. 
As an aside, once we were detained at Walmart while security asked why we needed 256 rolls of toilet paper. And Jimmy said, well, we all have bad diarrhea. And we laughed through the cop's sighs and eventually they let us go and said they'd get us good one day and after we, yeah, ride it all over town. Anyway, we got enough TP to warrant our backpack presence in the grocery store and a good start on what we'll need to TP another Jimmy's house later. Alan elbows a jar of spaghetti sauce onto the ground around the time Quentin rolls out. Stuffed blue backpack with three Smirnoff handles clanking and there's a chaos and somehow they know and some underpaid manager chases after us and we jump laughing into Jimmy's running car and speed off and for real, a cop follows us for a few blocks so we take a quick left, right, left and turn into the Sarah that Jimmy lost his virginity to's garage to hang out for a bit while we wait for it all to blow over. Plus, Sarah's brother is a dealer so we can smoke a lot and the little box of moonlight their garage provides and her parents, good hard work and Italian folk, Second generation Americans always have the best snacks. Later, I will throw up under a street light. Then even more later, after Alan gets a blow job from Jenny with whom Jimmy is in love, we go out to the other Jimmy's house in the fancy suburbs and let the TP fly. 256 rolls worth floating through the sky like how some clouds look like birds. When we're done, we know we've done something right. We've shown the world that we really matter. For the next couple of days, you can see our good work from 169 South, the highway that pushes us down back from the nicer houses into our parents' cramped apartments. The whites of the teepee from the trees swaying like surrender flags, like all the stuff surrounding the part of the eye that sees, which some teachers must have tried to teach us the word for. In vain, they tried to teach us while we were too busy plotting how to get away with and from everything. Last poem. Thank you again for your time and for listening. This is the last poem in my book, So What? Palpable dread now all over the silvery slink of each day. We've been listening exclusively to songs that feature real drums and hand claps and foot stomps in order to remind ourselves of the natural rhythms of humanity, but that doesn't really work. So we try sex, which also doesn't work, but is more fun at least. And look, I don't know if I can make it past my Caspers, but I try at least a little every day. And hey, you know, this tarnished and stolen land groans with every step anyway. So I look up, there's a bunch of buildings and shit in the way of the sky. What though? Uh, thank you so much, Franklin. Um, and thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be reading for Wendy Subway and also for Sky's books. Um, I thought tonight I would read from a recent chat book uh, that just came out. And all of these poems have to do with the life and death and friendship of the poet Joanne Kiger. And um, I'll just read a handful of these. And um, the first poem I'm going to read in here, um, it's made of language from a film um, that Joanne made in 1968 um, on an early form of video. And she just had fragments of poetry occur throughout the film and I just kind of scribed them down and um, was sort of desperately clinging to them as some kind of communication with her after losing her. Um, but it's untitled. Uh, Once upon a time, I was speaking and he was speaking and the poem was speaking. Thank you for the ground it gives us, gives us a place to be. I was speaking and you were speaking and the poem was speaking, gives us a place to be. Thank you for the ground it gives us. November 19th, 2016 for Joanne Kiger. 
One, poetry is the part that no one sees. Clip the flower, burn the brush, watch rain stream down the moon viewing window. Six drops fold together, then glimmer. Burn a stick of autumn leaves, crack the screen door, write longer, have beams shooting out and over the blessed, bountiful body. Do not revisit poems the next day. They have already rejoined the actual matter, daily music fallen back into the fabric. To acknowledge mastery would violate her flexibility, even further terms, the heat, and shape of the mountain. Two, bring the outside in, the gray continuous tangle of moss posing as a mandala, burning the sudden white tiny cracks in between, outside. And this one was written in Marfa, um, like a month after Joanne's death. On the way. Have the swallows returned to my porch light? I may have left it on through the night. I may have burnt them out. When the light, when the wind shakes the window glass, I step out of the house, hoping for the smell of rain twisted and waking up the earth the dust dispersed over again, longing for further signs of your presence, mistaking bats for the swallows, rushing up Ridge Street again, the sun sets late for the divers. You are everywhere, it's wonderful and true, but not location. That's my point of sadness, the impaler. No hologram or talking back or ghost of a chance, but a small polished box we can sit beside. What is left to bring to moving pictures? A steady focus, ability to unwind and rest the lever, the eye left hanging open, watching the red gold line of morning to rise. Record the bobbing heads of lavender flowers, wind off the sea, over the shoulder as you said, a wonderful density and appreciation of language, or in lines from your sketches of Blavatsky. But of course, this is not the end. Oh no. One is more in time, so attentive to its wavering, her pacing enveloping, wanting to see. And that's dated April 17th, uh, 2017 for Joanne again. Cold Valley, the fog shades a smooth stone bust, then slips into rain. My mind is well-suited, onyx shining edges, the reflection itself. Traces of mist on an old window. The best part is grinding the ink down endlessly, filling my brush, gray morning, I first feel the mind as reflex. Bright and clear, the end of Evergreen Road is closed and crumbling away. Bill McNeil's red poppy resolves to be eaten alive, exposed to a shaft of air between the flower and its flat glass, masterful. The black bleeds out from his beak in long tears, ink onto sopping head feathers, slicked back, black stitches on yellow, powdered eyes aglow, white speckles thrown onto autumn breast feathers, a white field below. Mirror box dissolved. One, balance of the onrush, its drama one of silence over sound of being skirted in passage with priests behind doors, color and cut gold, a clouded cistern, jackal bounding about the pines between reeds, my guardians overjoyed driving off the clouds into cities. The chariot doubles back in two parts, a wing to pump to slow the air, 
a city aloft for the birds most grand, set apart adrift, fountain-stamped dome at the center. Two, long tones sweating the ice-locked sutras, arriving inside of stations, verses toppling out stranded, a river scene beside the wires left crackling, pools in razor crosses of birds. The clutch is worn, fallen back, golden grasses striking blue silk. And I'll close with a couple of new poems. Um, they're pretty short. This is called Double Vision. Dry tip golden as sunken points of arrows, voices, a phantom's near to dissolving night. Swarm of locusts down iron post in cross of wind. All erasure of William Carlos Williams. Stars unfold throughout pendants and no further. Cool the tendons advancement in splayed crepe myrtle, tall teetering voices tonight. How many plots are gained from a book of his poems, dumb fuckheads leaving no ruins. A stick is pointed at the empty corner, a masterwork withheld, clawfoot bathtub, extra bleed, integral illusions of relief. Shoulder to shoulder gunmen form a cube seen in nearest sky. Thread splits from shark skin waistcoats, back view jolted off the hook. The several sounded out munitions in my voice. Harry Callahan poem. The poems are so minimal because the garden is part of them. Mirror left in a meadow of seagrass, the lights point their own way out in tiny stabbing gestures, desperate devil at the end of a crowded field, just his head with both arms held over as one. Shadows break to fake a moment, the rest pass. Cold lake water, eye level, behind a screen of winter trees. Venus left lying on a white blanket, green intrepid ferns or standing nude before a back, the backlit blinds. Exquisite doorways comb the sand into pattern, into evening sun and well-worn brick. My flowers hang from a ceiling of leaves. And one more um, for another great poet. Um, this is called Summer Triptych for Tom Rayworth. Almost sick at Gatwick, ace in front pocket, made to stand still, boarding onto Madrid, adrift in all senses. One marble facade, its dirt rears up against another ring of streets. Our own alley has crash mats, the men doze off with clean, bare feet. A crystal dagger suspended over empty trees has turned itself gray, betrayed in the absolute ways of poetry. Limestone encased in rusted wires, a place of worship left out overnight to prick the open air. His vocal has a tilt to it, which my body cannot trap. Replicate the sea instead of the wreck, adrift in all senses. Thank you. Anim Boju, Nikon de Genecas, Makwan and Dudem, Kabakan and Dunjaba, Lenape Hoking in Danulu, Apijigami Bwich, Bissendawiak, Apijigwage Sky, Franklin, Cedar, Minawa, Wendy Subway. My name is Nicole. Um, I currently live on unceded Canarsi and Lenape territory in so called Brooklyn, New York. Um, I'm really grateful to be reading with Sky and Franklin and Cedar tonight, and I want to extend thanks to them. And um, also thanks to Wendy Subway and everybody who's worked to put this reading together. 
Um, yay, congrats, Sky, too, on the second edition of your beautiful book. Um, that's what we're all here for. Um, I'm going to read two poems from my chapbook, uh, Wasamalan, and then I'll read four new or newer pieces, rather. New Year poem. I hold the paisley dress in my hand, fucking stairway to heaven. Check beads, ill-fitting, high-waisted. I took my pants off in the loft. Rings, eyes of Horus, mother of pearl, inlaid, misplaced, for protection, boundaries, for travel. December 26th will be dedicated to exorcism. We'll burn up the demons, new negro. Gawin, igawabamin, minawa, how close human, this wonder, wander, like when the clouds move at the same speed as the water, or like when the barge goes against the current, but the birds, messengers, fly east in tandem. Worst things have happened. Nishkin Zagun, Ijanan, Gishkin Zagun, Gishkin Zagun, Ijanan, Nishkin Zagun, Inde, Ijawijagade, to leave at the highest point at the museum, underwater, looking up. My girl, my girl. Named after a street, conceived after a kegger, the further away we get, this fine dark hair curls to ringlets. Muckaday, Wittabay, this fire pulled from the river. Gitchi Zibi Oma, Oma Gakabakong. Nicole is not who I thought she was, and I don't yet know the word for Gawin Mashe Ingekinamasi Nimbaba. I just laid on the floor for a while. The problem is I can do whatever I want and I'm not supposed to know how to say I don't know in the first place. Let the wind in on nights like this. Illusion of clouds moving through the sky. Nothing more lonesome than that lonesome fucking Dutch painting you love so much. Her hair next to our bed. Do you like conflict? Let it in this humidity. Look at the lights come down through the trees, my girl. The way it looks pink and gray between the sun and this morning on Wyckoff. This exhaust. How do you say the flowers fall from the trees? Be more specific, my girl. Learn your grammar, my girl, my girl. I'm learning, I say. Ogini Wandeg, pink roses on the pillowcase. Good fortune comes, it comes and comes, and I don't know what's good for me, but oh so deeply. Elemental pressures, beautiful stones. The strength card comes up. It says, take the lion by its face, my girl. Learn your grammar, look down into its eyes, down into it. Apone, 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 inda ijuwajagade. And I want to get on top, but I'm just so tired. Let the wind brush over it. Bad judgment comes and comes, my girl, you are learning what it means. When the flowers fall from the trees. This cold snap. It's a myth, Laura says. The smell of $6 shirts, the lights coming down through the trees, the grass. Nicole is not who I thought she was, my girl. All this green. Ojawashwalaze and da. Okay, I'm going to read four newer poems from an, a new thing I'm working on. Um, it's called a Nungunsak, so, which is an Anishinaabe Finwin word, um, which could translate to English, I guess, as um, little stars. So um, these are named also in Ojibwe. So the first one is called Bejik. I stand on the corner and practice looking into the wind like balance. 
this reflection of past catching up to future, catching up to this present. You know the feeling when Daga, 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 we do Koishanam. A switch moves the day, it falls and folds. Papa Kine Iwe Ishkade, Onabani Jesus. Light the fire, light it, I said. Kate, you fuck me up. I never compose like this in the grocery store holding an apple. There is something about having a boat that got me across the water in the dream. B, 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 Beach, Ni, 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 Beach, Anna Beach, ZB, Jibige, Beach, Ni Beach. The way I know how to read the way, the words behind, the way I know, the way it comes together. Your arm bent at the elbow, hands a leaf. Anin Ananjeg Anandeg. You, the color of the light of the stars. Niche. But for the sake of privacy, the circle, Imagine this space is warm and was and is not. And I think of all the sounds small crystals make when pushed together. And I'm failing at being honest. And what, and what, and what? I see what threads lie bare, what things accumulate. I try and be honest, and I am not. Neen, geen, geenoween. I disrespect time because it has disrespected me and I don't know much more than that. And when you come back, this will all be gone. And what can you expect when or with? The sounds you make in the night, the ways in which you don't. And it's so far from here, it's so far. I just put the first thing on, but for the sake of me. This way. Gay get apane, apane, gay get knots overlay fractions. Away gonane, gi wanisin to twist this cold water net like a spider. Asabik, asabik. And when the fire burns the field, anongongsa, apone, agrojin, something they cannot see, eya oma indaya, geget apone, geget, the wind bends shapeless in a certain way. Let's have one more left. Niwen. Amongst these shifts, flicker, green, blue, Nongong, Wabang, Bijanago, Beka, Beka, Beka. How as if the weight turns away of repetition and still, still, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And now tonight, the screen, what games do you have to play in order to do what you need, as in it is what it is not? What we are meant to carry, what we meant blue, green. There is no distinguishing upon this account, though easy upon this account, as if that were something, space held by a shadow, when there is only one word for. Miigwech. Um, thank you all for listening. I'm really excited to hear Sky read next. Um.
Thank you. Thank you so much, Nicole, Cedar, Franklin. Um, it's been really wonderful to hear you all read tonight. And thank you all for coming. And thank you for reading and sharing your work. And thank you, everyone in the audience. And thank you for Wendy Subway um, for help making this book possible. Um, I think I'm just going to get into it. <clears throat> This is a beginning that isn't a beginning. This is the youth, oh youth, and Franklin said, so what? The betrayal was acknowledged when Emerson wrote a letter to Van Buren and warned that the seat and seal would become an instrument of perfidy. It was neither the first nor the last in this country, this body of earth. But I didn't forget about you, our love, as you moved on and away back across the ocean, back across the sea, back across the spirit world into the land of the dead. Back to Castile and Aragon, where you don't think of we anymore. You've neglected our pain. You've ignored our children. You discarded our dead. Back to King Louis because you're the same. You've tussled our hair and torn out our trust and pushed us away and sold us out. Back to King George. You've taken our things and won't give them back. You came and you took and you made promises that sing and gave us a tongue bitter in taste, parched and thirsty. Broad Europe, you remain over there. You forgot my mother, my father, and my brother and sister who mourn every day. But we can't forget you as your violent emissaries remain. I'm not mad, I'm not angry, I'm not hurt. I'm just deeply troubled at heart. Maybe I'm lying. Maybe these words that follow are a way. Not the only way, not the right way, not a good way, but an empty way. Voided by language, voided by absence, void of trust. A hollow way being filled by those traumas I never wanted to be taught. Still, this earthly trauma begins with you. There you are, and hello, here I am, with this. This is the by and by, and often the hours slide slowly along, gliding and gleaming after each day is done. Dark and tangled in the stride, its iris smiles above and to the west, towards the ocean where the boundaries of the world meet in death is again negotiated in the dusk, then drawn into dawn. Towards the shore we go, lost in life and less certain of death, with riches lessened by age and abundance. Back on the water, the dark water, the caps are whitened by the winds and the waves as they feed into each other. Back to the interior, we are on the beach and on the sand. Who's to say that east or west matter anymore when given directions such as Martini? This is the shore, this is the beginning, this is our youth. The Eidos of Lido gives way to the capriciousness of Olympus returning from a voyage beyond the ocean, beyond the outer frontier of childhood and memories, escaping between then and now. As to say, floating freely along an indefinite plane, dislocated and ordinary. On the sands, on the sands, still wearing so many layers of clothes or anything to be forgotten behind. There's a certain warmth that comes from hiding under loose intentions and false confidences, revealed by simple gestures of participation, participation in the burying of all things. Yet I'm not sure whether this figure has, has sprouted or if it's even begun to grow. Still, the body is a place of authority and authorship, a site for devastation, to be carried away with simple nudities, simply exposed, browning ends, in the sea, in the sea, I've swam and sunk, half drunk and sleepy from the sun. The trash floating nearby were markers and boundaries of ours, not theirs. And the simple explanation is that they won't come where the dusk of dry, dark skin flakes off into the murk of the water. Scum and scum and scum leaf film beneath the flotsam, floating along and through it all, and then flow to you. The perfidy of their actions left us like that, tongues tied up and smashed between pages marked by those who say, not our spirit, but collections of those everyday gestures, sand signaled beneath tall trees and between tall grasses, on carved out trunks and woven bark, lashed together, tarred and floating along rivers. It was the closest we could get to flying. There is no flight except when breath is held and feet lap slowly and rhythm rhythmically in and out of water. Half circles incomplete and dull, leaving impressions of gifts, accepted and abandoned rippling ways of earth. Seen and seen and saw and was and now I will be. So much more careful around those who bear backs. 
burdened by guilt and pleasure. I seen you here last night and it was like meeting an old friend. Our burden are our bones aching and swelling, sued by the salt from the sea or an ocean. Whenever it was, this dumb kindness, empty and clear and airy, eventually cloistered and became impermeable, waiting and falling, while fearful of the water spirits and the boundary of their territories. Swimming through the swimmer's wake, tumbling in the tumult of the ocean, bounding off rocks and diving into pools of green, leaning and swept along our feet, testing the tethers of lungs and skin underneath sun and awnings, loose and flapping in the wind. In a window in the air through the glass shines the sun, up high, so very high, and I sit and I stare down, on land and streams so small and very small. Reflections of the earth are blurred by clouds, and thoughts of last week when those same vapors left their place, and the firmament was vast. Neglectful of nothing, the windows up here are bright and hot. They burn away the sweat and sweet darkened skin so that nothing is recognizable, only as pale shades of yesterday. Marks and scratches and clear plastic give permanence to the barriers between the void and me. And now I contain myself within a heart pressured by altitude and worry. Death and loss are all around, but so is affection meager and less than before. An eagerness within a myriad of myopic mistakes, already miserable in their execution, in their time and in their timing, that has worn away the weary muscle, pumping and pulling rafts of oxygen and plasma. Suspended in the river, we can't fly anymore. A dream of a minor year with sweetness and drowsy longing, it was quickly shaken, it was quietly awoken by the obscenity of me and you. Me and you and I and we, wandering in wounded realms, where roaming is locked and remembered as a solipsistic search for the other. What happens when you meet me and there's everything we've been that was crackled and crumpled and built and fixed haphazardly without instruction, with only memories of memories to know how each of us, we used to be. Photographs suspended in a flash, a flash, three flashes, show that's how they exist. Voices heard in an old recording endure, how they were damp possibilities that became dry and parched under the equatorial sun. Smile and laugh easy, frown and cry deeply. And the persistence of perfidy cracked slowly. Neither one of us was perfidious to the other, but only to a promise to ourselves made before we met each other. Your hair shone brightly on those afternoons, spent daily next to the waves, crested and falling evenly and rhythmically above sonorous rumble, where the cloudless blue egress of summer dimmed slowly behind the evening tide. This is from Perfidia. Um, but I think I'm gonna read something older from, from my grandmother. Uh, this is called American Traditional War Dances. Open notes to Sylvia Gard. I grew up with her um, this my entire life until she passed away. Uh, she was always constant and uh, I don't know, it just feels good to read this. Waterlocked cherry sat dripping on the side table. I brought you a new pack of cigarettes from your room, peeling the cellophane at the top. After you lit up, I laid back down on the couch, thinking about the smell, wondering if I'd ever smoke. Under the palm trees strewn around the front scattered in our backyard and went over the route we laid out. You, under the awning, drinking ice water or iced tea, can't remember. Hitting pause on the tape player to tell me I'm off beat and off time and the first push-up hasn't even come yet. I couldn't hear the downbeat then and I can't now. But when I listen to that thud, flack, thud, flack, yours is always the first voice in the up and up that tells me when I should be. Rewound tape begins again, counting, pausing, playing, aching, imagining when I will learn how to become someone new. Canadian television at the AM set the tone for years after that first session, maybe the fourth, when we found our story. The serialized show from a reservation above the Arctic Circle gave me perspective of what we were doing in the desert. You and I in our living room. Teach me how to war dance like you learned from watching the old men and how you taught my brother and my mother. Thick dry heat suffocated us in a good way when we stepped outside. But for the most part, swamp coolers and the broad slatted blends pointed upwards and gave the living room a cool blue hue in the morning sun. The windows faced north. Never thought of that before. 
At the airport, my auntie Titi, my sister and I waited in the parking lot listening to a yellow jacket buzz on the radio. Titi told the stories of her time sweating away the pain of others. She's closer to God than I'll ever be. A sacred cough too holy for those tubes of oxygen to contain. I wonder if I regret that I only knew her when she was ill. But even till the studs sing a song you loved and so did I. That song was artist victory song, an end song. Positively pounding as an intertribal that didn't sound like an old one. Maybe it come from someone like my dad, Mike. He would tell me stories in between sessions when I was sweaty and tired, lying on the floor, breathing to the, breathing to the ceiling, imagining the cottage cheese bumps were inverted mountain ranges of a great white country I was too large to traverse discreetly. I thought of those years before in Titi's apartment in Ferndale Square, a long time ago last night with her and my sister, watching VHS tapes of recorded television shows and movies pilfered with static. We take turns finding balance in the vertical hold. I often wonder where I was, insects scurrying next to my sleeping baby brother. We'd been in the desert for about six months and I began to realize what I was missing out on. Leaving my home under a cold gray blanket of the Pacific Northwest to live beneath the bright blue skies of the desert where lights shone on everything I knew I couldn't be. I failed at being present and my presentation was beginning to fail. A 13-year-old in a new place with groups of histories that spanned eight years and more. Quite like the time when you're an adolescent. The cockroach, its carapace crackling and collapsing under the weight of pressed toilet paper, stained brown, red, gray, seeping onto both the wall and my finger. I cried when I knew I wasn't going home again. Not heavy heaving sobs, but quiet gasps with holding tears in a way I imagined would make Mike proud. The person I'd been becoming wasn't going to grow into the person I'd eventually be. It's hard to describe such a sadness, or any small joy felt so fragile and tenuous that it'll haunt you and repeat whatever action or sentiment that brought about such plain and easy emotions. The joys present in a day or in an evening are such because they're about the moment. Where everything else falls away, you're allowed to be the person you're supposed to be. And that's what I tell myself. I can't remember when I learned that you were a swimmer. With stories of Adak Island and the outer reaches of the Aleutian chain, scuba diving and disc jockeying filled me with hope. You sat on a chair under an umbrella by the side of the pool and counted laps and taught me better form. It was a small kidney shaped pool, but large enough for an obese boy of 14 to get winded and feel that accomplished. It's about when we started the dance. I felt at ease on those long drives to a mountain pass at the edge of the valley staring out the window, listening to the hum of the wheel rolling along the road from our home to the Morongo Indian Health Services Clinic. You, my mom, and my stepdad knew what you couldn't do and agreed that I needed someone to talk to. Dr. McMichael was white, but had a brown beard and a thinning ponytail, and that for some reason made him easier to visit with. Each session we played here now as he listened to me, searched for words that I didn't know existed, told me stories, and gave me permission to feel how I felt. I'm glad I still remember his name. We grew up practicing in the living room of our tiny apartment since before I could remember. Tiny circles grew smaller as so I turned and ducked and dived, always reluctant and shyly. We didn't have time for that. He's higher and get lower. Those, command, those commands bounce in my head every time I get on the dance floor to powwow or practice in my bedroom. I still practice with a sense of bashfulness, always when my roommates aren't home. I've outgrown enough, but not that. You died on January 27th, 2005. I was 20 and wasn't there. I came home for Thanksgiving and my brother told me that you weren't well. Came back for Christmas and play, played you some songs on my guitar. I remember when I'd be practicing in my bedroom and after I'd finished a song that I was trying to learn from the tabs on the internet, you did let me from the living room that I played with your new favorite song and played again. You were barely awake. Your eyelids were heavy. You slurred your words. You said that song was still your favorite. I cried, not those proud like my father cries that I was used to, but heavy sobs buried in my mother's chest. I went back to Riverside and waited for word. It finally came when my mom called and said that my brother Nishun was there with you when you left. I was proud to take care of you when I could, however little it was. You died at home back in the Pacific Northwest in the living room of the house you and my mother and my stepfather worked for, where you decorated and potted your plants, sat and watched as I watered your dahlias. 
where you said to me, you are not your father and you are not your mother. You are not me and you'll never be any of us. You're okay as you were and as you'll always will be. Maybe that's how I remember it. I think that's about it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sky, um, Franklin, Cedar, and Nicole. That was really beautiful. Um, I feel very moved. Um, if anyone has any questions in the audience or thoughts or feelings they'd like to share um, with everyone else here, um, you can feel free to do so, um, either using the Q&A or if you can um, drop anything in the chat, you can do that as well. Um, and we'll give it a few minutes. Um, Otherwise, um, I feel very grateful to be here with you all. Um, this has been really special. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Sonia, and thanks, Sky and Franklin and Cedar. It was really beautiful. Oh, yeah, let's see. Okay, that was really beautiful i'm sorry i just wanted to echo that that was wow you guys are so good i feel so privileged to be in your company for real like <laughs> wow Okay, well, maybe we wrap it up. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, this was really sweet. Yeah, thanks everyone again for being here. Um, and Sky's book is available online. Buy it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Okay, bye. <laughs>